Hi, this is Mark. Congratulations. You have found this amazingly awesome show. Chances are you're listening to it right now on whether it's iTunes or Stitcher Radio or some other mobile app that allows you to stream this amazingly awesome show to your ear holes. And I can't stress how awesomely amazing the show really is. But did you know that you can also catch the latest episode of this show on the Tangibound Network? That's right. Go check out TangibondNetwork.com. You can look them up and you can listen to it right there. It's even mobile friendly. What more could you ask for? Which means you can pull it up on your iPhone or your Android, even your Windows phone. Yeah, who has one of those? But still, point remains. You can do it. You can do it. Check it out. TangibondNetwork.com. Listen to this show, the latest episode, every time. Check it out. Welcome to the Wicked Radio Network. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you gonna blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. Way. I don't care how you're doing, what's up or how's it hanging, I'd like to buy this world one last drink, and life sucks all of the time, so stick it up your sunshine, and then you'll see the clouds every day, and then you'll see the clouds every day. Then you'll see the clouds every day. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Crazy Life. Uh, no Jen this week, because uh, apparently she lost her voice. Uh, so it's just me, Brian, and joining me as uh, usual is Heno. Hello. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we, we tried to talk Jen into joining us anyway, cause it would have been hilarious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Jen, how was your week? Speak up. What, what was that? Yeah. I couldn't quite hear you. I almost, uh, we're on the wrong show for that joke. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, if this was salty language, we would, know, we would have just gone. done it. <laughs> yeah. She would have been on the show. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> the whole show, we would have just got, thrown it to her the whole time. <laughs> what do you think, Jen? <laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Lordy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah so hopefully she uh feels better soon and you know yes. whatnot because i know i know that really sucks for her um you know because it's uh you know she's had issues with that off and on for years where just sometimes she'll just wake up and basically her voice is gone really so, wow yeah, it's yeah it's no fun it's just so much of who she is yeah you know right it's her, her expressiveness and it's like sounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know what? It's the truth is not everyone can make that claim. Yeah. True. I know people who's like, they would rather never open their mouths at all because it is just not part of, you know, they're nope. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, in honesty, like <laughs> on most days, if I woke up and I didn't have my voice, I'd be like, mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it wouldn't make that much difference to me. But I'm good. Yeah, I mean, it would be, you know, kind of my luck. It would probably be, you know, on a podcast day. But <laughs> Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. If it was a salty language day, I'd probably try to force through it just to see if we could make any jokes out of it. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. Turn my mic way up. <laughs> I was just going to say it. You got microphones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be terrible. Oh, but <laughs> Good stuff. Oh, man. So how, how was uh, your week, sir? Oh, it's been uh, really great, actually. It's been uh, we see my highlights were uh, did a couple. Well, did one more rehearsal, and we ended up doing that uh, service on Sunday. 
and it was off the hook. It was it was more than I you know than anybody could have asked for. And that's, it really was. It was about just everyone just hanging out, celebrating, you know, talking about Mo, reflecting on him and the music. We were like, I was. I was a little shocked how good we were. <laughs> I mean, yeah. considering, I mean, we haven't. I mean, we haven't played with Danae in three years. Uh, Dave and Dave and I, we, I mean, we got in one rehearsal a week ago. That was it, and we had a couple of songs that were so. There were point. I was in the song at one point, just going, "Okay, this can't get much better." We, wow. It was just spot on, and at the end, people came up and they were just blown away by the energy and a few songs we got done and I could feel the crowd reflecting the energy back. Like oh, where I'm like, wow. okay, that just, I mean, I was like golf clapping, you know, <laughs> yeah, each other because it was like, wow, we just, all of us. And I meant the crowd too. It's like, this was a group effort. And then we found, we got a noise complaint on a Sunday afternoon, which is like, yes. <laughs> Wait, you and you guys you were rock. doing an acoustic set too, weren't you? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, we're amplified and stuff, oh, but the right. crowd okay, was going okay. nuts too. You know, it's <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was it was great. And, uh, you know, I was I had to go home, get all the equipment set up. I was using a different mixing board than I've ever you know ever used before. And so I had a little bit of stress getting getting everything going. And then Mo's mom, who is, you know, she it, she exists on a completely separate plane than planet Earth. That's, you know, I don't want to make any mental health observations because i don't know yeah, i just sure. realized that she is in her own realm and she came up and started yelling into the microphones and going off on a bunch of stuff through the monitor and i and it was like loud oh, and my. my ear and oh man i was like okay uh how you know and who uh it, it was a little rough beginning with that but anyhow what i was saying is i was so focused on getting everything going we started playing and I really didn't have much of a chance to reflect on who was there, what we were doing, why we were doing it, this kind of thing. You know, I said right. some things, but at the end we had family members come up to us and thank us like sincerely and saying, now I know why you were one of Mo's favorite bands and I understand. And that was it. I was done. Feels. I mean, just <laughs> I'm like, can I cry now? <laughs> you know, yeah. Is it okay now? Right. You know, can I just ball? And then Becca, you know, his wife came up to me and that's where I'm just like, I'm done. I'm letting it out. You know, <laughs> I just had a little ball and it was like, okay, I got to pack up next band's coming on. <laughs> um, but uh, so that was like, Everything about what I shared last week about kind of, you know, coming out of my spiral a little and what we talked about last week about just being in a just a, a nice, safe place. That was the rest of my week. It just felt good. You know, I kept I I didn't you know, I, there were a couple of things I wanted to get done on the weekend. I didn't get them done, but I got a ton of stuff listed on eBay. You know, I'm selling more stuff. I'm clearing out clutter and, and I feel like I'm clearing out the clutter in my head too. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then this thing happened. It was Thursday night and everyone was here and we were playing music and it, it was awesome. We were just grooving and I get a text message from our old guitar player. And it started with something like, uh, you know, good luck with the show this weekend, blah, 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 said something else and then asked me about a band. And I said, no, I never heard of him. And, you know, I got back to rehearsals. Um, and everyone left and I was pretty beat, you know, end of my work week and I get into bed and all of a sudden there's like phone calls coming in from him and I got the ringer off cause I didn't want to be disturbed. And it's like 10 30 and now I'm looking and there's text messages and I see the word douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I looked down and he was completely going off on me via text on his own without me engaging. Oh, wow. And I, I looked down at a couple of things and I went, nope, no, you know, and I just set it aside and just a little background he and I, he's was about three years sober when I got sober and he's a, uh, he's a stubborn fellow. 
and he's doesn't really relate to people very well. And it's just his personality. I never knock him for it. It's part. It's it's who he is. Yeah. And I still love him for who he is. I mean, flat out. And we started all of. You know, I had not played guitar. I basically, when I left California, I stopped playing guitar. And it, Dave and I just got together and just to play some music. Hey, let's get to go and play some music. And and he taught me a lot of different styles. I was never really into jam bands and stuff, and he was. So I learned all this new stuff and. This is how Cal Says Moo got started was with us. And eventually, you know, every band has to have, you have to have a leader. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to be, you know, and for me, I can, I'll step up and be the leader or I will, you know, step back and let somebody else lead. But it's usually the person that either has the vision or the chops. Yeah. And that's how it goes. And, you know, that was, I had the experience and the knowledge. So I, and I would rather call myself the captain, you know, not the leader of the kind of team captain, but somebody has to direct, you have to have a director. And that just Dave, parts of Dave, it just, it rubs him the wrong way when he's being pushed in a direction he doesn't want to go. And with his stubbornness. And I'm, like I said, I'm, I'll never knock him for it. It's who he is. And he is, his, his, he is, you know, he, he just, he eventually said, you know what? I don't like this and I'm done. And he quit. And unfortunately we had a horrible falling out and we didn't speak for years and he got married and I wasn't even there at the wedding, all this stuff, but we fixed our friendship. We got it all taken care of. He joined us and played us some music with us with cake face chain. One, one, uh, like it was like Memorial day weekend or labor day weekend. Awesome. Great. We've been in communication with each other ever since then. And this happened and I was having a great week. You know, and I woke up in the morning and there's voicemails and there's text messages basically saying some really rotten things to me and a little bit of don't you know who I am and this kind of stuff. Yeah. And the thing is, is I know he drinks now. Uh, He's no longer sober. There was expression that I've never heard from him before. And I can't, I, you know, I can't say anything about that. All I saw, all I saw was what I saw, you know, and I, and I went, no, I I'm not doing this. You're not harshing my gig, hardcore Crester. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah. Like, I mean, that's I was in, I was in the zone last week. It felt good, right? And it was just this negativity. And I sat there, and I just sat there, and I and I started to to, to text something, and I took it back, and I start and I took it back because all that came into my head was my opinions of him and my judgments. Yeah, and they're irrelevant. They don't mean a thing. It's uh, who am I to pass judgment on him? You know, uh, he, he's responsible for his own behavior. I'm responsible for mine. And so I just, you know, I just said, wow, dot, dot, dot. I was in bed last night, dot, dot, dot. Please don't contact me again. Yeah. And I put the phone down and I went on with my weekend. And I did talk about this with the band because you know they know they know him as well as i do the weird part about it was sitting there going okay so i decided to exercise extreme restraint of tongue and pen to him but i didn't exercise that same restraint of tongue with my bandmates right and it, and and when it was also i don't feel bad about anything that was i mean it i i just it said what was said you know it that's what happened is what happened but it left me feeling a little odd, like, okay, was that, you know, should I have restrained altogether and just let it go completely? I don't find that works very well. Usually holding something inside. I, I'm usually better if I up and out with things. Yeah, and then yeah, on. I understand. Yeah. But at least as far as he went, I'm like, I am not engaging in this. Why? There's, you know, when you're in a good place and you're just like, no, yeah. I have no part in this because I never even like the whatever happened, whatever happened inside of his head happened by himself. Right. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't even exchange anything. Have, have you ever had a friend or somebody that, you know, that um, that you'd go out to a bar with or something and they were the type that they would look to get into a, a fight with other people? Like they'd go up and they'd, you know, they they'd kind of throw a little shoulder into somebody, just to see if they could get them to start a fight. 
Yeah, just trolling. Yeah, yeah. a little bit. <clears throat> There was a guy I used to hang out with that would do that. Like, he'd get enough in him, like, booze-wise, and then he would just look for a fight. Like, he just liked to fight people. And we were always, like, we'd try to catch him. Like, when if we saw he was getting to that point, we'd always be like, all right, time to go, you know? Because, you know, nobody wants to get arrested, basically. And, uh, you know, plus, you know, we didn't really want to get into any sort of fights. But he was one of those guys that it was one of – and he would even do it with us. Like – if we'd go to someone else, go back to somebody's house or something, he'd start to try to get one of us to fight him. And, uh, we would be like, dude, we're not fighting you. Like, we're not doing this. And I mean, he would just like, you know, he'd shove your shoulder or just shove you in the chest or whatever. And we're like, we're not doing this. And eventually he'd let it go. But it was in, and it just kind of reminds me a little of that. Like somebody just kind of, um, poking the bear, like just trying to get you to engage in that because, wherever they are mentally at that point, they want the fight and they're just trying to get somebody to fight with them. You know, it's yeah. like, I wonder if there's any element of that in that kind of thing. Cause I've seen people do it verbally as well as physically, you know, you can yeah. just tell somebody's in a bad mood and they're just looking for somebody to get into an argument with, you know, and yeah. you're just like, you know, how and everybody can say like, Whoa, your anger is totally misdirected. Like, I didn't do anything to you to deserve this. You're just taking this out on me. Like you want an argument with somebody or something, you know? And I've been through people that'll do that sometimes that they'll just go off on you for something. And you're just like, I had no, I didn't do anything here. Like, like you said, this is all taking place in your head. Like I didn't do anything to encourage this or to start this. Yeah. You and the, the, the place where I could say, okay, what's my part in this? Yeah. Well, I could have called him and said, would you like to be part of this? Mm. I could have. However, he lives two hours away from me. Yeah. We're probably not going to rehearse. And it's just that doesn't. It was pretty short notice, too. I mean, it's not like you guys had three months or, a, yeah. you know, something to. And I could have out. still in, it extended the invitation. Yeah, sure. And I'm like, you know, that's fine. I'll own that. I'll mm -hmm. own that. Yeah. You know, and and what was wild is that at the first I said, hey, you know, this, you know, Danae seems to be really enjoying this. There might be some jams in the future, you know, and his response was, oh, great. You know, and it was very I, later reflection. I was like, it's very passive aggressive. You know, you start with some, you know, a nice little compliment and then work your way into, hey, you know, uh, this kind of bugs me. Yeah. And then when you don't get the response, it goes to saying mean things and then ending with poor me you don't care right you know and so i think you're right in that that yeah when we're if you're feeling down and if you're feeling like you're be, you're a victim mm -hmm. it's easy to lash out it's easy to you know just yeah. to find the scapegoat or whatever it is and you know and i and i in some previous conversations i know he's like you know i'd love to move back up there i'd like to be around people i can play music with and that kind of stuff so who knows what's going on yeah well, yeah, uh, obviously, but, I wasn't, you know, yeah. you know me well enough to know. I'm not trying to make any judgments. No, I'm just, yeah, exactly. Just my own curiosities because yeah. sometimes people just uh, they've kind of got their own um, kind of got their own internal hurricane, and they're they're just trying to kind of pull someone in to, you know, be part of it. That's what it felt like. Yeah. That's what it felt like. It was like you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not in a good place, and you're going to share it with me. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not. Right. And it was a. That's my freaking win for the week yep it's like no yeah i have a choice here and i don't have to engage right you can't change him but you can change you know or you can change how this affects you you know and you chose yeah, and, your destiny uh, in this yeah because i imagine if i'd engaged it, it, blood pressure up yeah now it gets worse say the wrong thing mm -hmm. stick foot in mouth whatever it is and then in the end and then anxiety builds yeah. and then you feel like crap and blah, blah, blah. Oh, and it was like nice. Me, all, I would have been up all night just thinking about what was said and said, just overthinking. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Oh, and then and then and then what was a matter of a, a little bit of a conversation on Sunday would have ended up being like epic long talks. And, you know, <laughs> right. And like, yeah. And then regret and and, uh, you know. And it was so nice to just say, you know, I don't have to do this. Yep. I don't. Yeah. I don't have to do this right now. And, and I, but I'll still reflect on it and go, okay, what, 
you know, could I have done something different? Yeah, I could have. And, and, you know, I will think about it. It's like, do, do I owe an amends in this? Yeah. And, you know, I'll, 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 you know, I'll talk to one of my coaches about it and see what he has to say. And right. And like you said, next, if there were something like this again, you look at it and go, okay, well next time I, maybe I, I extend the invitation and yeah. there's, there's how I, I learn and grow from the situation, you know? Yeah. Because, that's the you know. the thing that I'm I and this is where I get there's a difference between having false pride and being proud and I will be proud of myself that I am no longer kicking walls that hurt you know I'm <laughs> right. no longer going up to hornet's nests and going you know <laughs> whack <laughs> you know yeah and, and wow what a great I oh, the, the, life is so much better this way. Yeah, and this is the same situation I ran into, you know, because I, I used to talk and argue politics with people all the time. And I got to a point to where I stopped. And I I rarely ever do now. And the reason is basically that exact comment. It, it, it's It's because typically what ends up happening is you just – kind of walk into uh, you you just walk into those situations where it tends to just be people yelling at each other or not really listening and and it ends up with you know uh you know high blood pressure and in just bad situations so i was just like why am i doing this like i'm not they're not changing their opinion i'm not changing my opinion on a lot of this stuff so why are we doing this you know kind of a thing and it isn't just that, but there's certain a lot of those situations where it's like once you recognize those situations, I'm like, okay, this, this, and this, I'm realizing like as soon as I realize that I'm starting to get into those categ or not categories, but like like this, like if I were going up against this, I would I would have probably done the same thing you did, but like I'm not doing this, like I am not putting myself through this, you know, like I beat myself up enough, I'm not gonna let somebody else beat me up too. You know, you know what? That's, that's so true. <laughs> it's so true. It's like, hey, I'm the master of my own criticism. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> like, I was like, you know, I was like, OK, sure. Yep. Uh, D bag. Fine. OK, I'll I'll, I'll own that. Yeah, <laughs> you okay, know? But after that, no, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like I can I I've, I've earned that myself just fine. I don't need anyone to else <laughs> proclaim it on right. me. I mean, hey, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's uh, I, I just I just think back on on. You know, would I would I change all those times where I couldn't do this? Well, no, because I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, yes, I'd love to have a lot of those of those moments back. Cause I'd probably have a lot of friendships back, you know, yeah. that, that fell apart. And, but in this case today, uh, you know, I, it's, it's, it's weird when you, for myself as someone who I tend to over overly cherish friendships and connections, mm. I tend to have a hard time letting go. I have a, uh, I think an imbalance there, you know, that I just, if I make a connection and a friendship with somebody for me to just, to see it fall apart has always been very hard yeah, for me. Sure. Uh, you know, that's the part of me that's very codependent. You know, I want to, I want, I, I, I feel like I, I can control these things that, that this was valuable at some point. So it should always be valuable, but that's not the case that, that, yeah. that goes into, then I have to, you know, compare that with uh, spiritual philosophies, especially with Buddhism of, of just, you know, um, impermanence. Nothing's permanent. No. Yeah. And, things, and, and I have to accept that. Right. Yeah. Things just run their course sometimes. It, it's yeah. just, you know, and it's, you've seen people where they're friends for a while and then they kind of drift apart or they're not, they have a falling out and then they kind of, after some years, they kind of become friends again, or yeah. even divorced couples sometimes. Like they get divorced and they're like almost bitter enemies, and then five years, six years, whatever down the road, and then they're they kind of become friends again, you know. And it's, um, I think sometimes people just don't accept, um, uh, you know, that sometimes things just run their course, and yeah. it's just it's it stinks. You don't want people to exit your lives. You know, because it it does it stinks. You know, 
you never want a relationship to die, no matter if it's a like a romantic relationship or a friendship, but it's still it it happens, you know, like you said, nothing is permanent. And you know, uh, you know, sometimes it's just like, well, maybe sometimes things are kinda you know, what did I learn from these situations and what can I take and go forward and you know that's it. Yeah. That's about all you can do, really. I mean it's very difficult to be that enlightened and look at those things when <laughs> when you're hurting after the word, but you know, it's sometimes that's all you got. <laughs> that's it, yeah. And I, I just look at now the weight of of do I want harmony? You know, once again, do I want harmony in my life or disharmony? Do I want struggle in my life or do I want you know? It doesn't mean that that I don't th- think. Oh, there's never struggle in life. No, there's always struggle yeah. in life. But I, if I can pick and choose. Like if it's struggle of my own making, yes, no thanks. Because I got an, you know, like you said, I've got enough problems already, right? That are outside of my control. You know, like part of this weekend was was the ringing in my ears has been worse the last three days, mm. and I was on stage with loud music, and that sucks. That makes me go, okay, well then I, you know, I do have a legitimate problem here. Yeah. That, that I, you know, I, I got some in-ear monitors and unfortunately I couldn't hear everybody. So I, you know, I had one of them out and it made my hearing worse. Yeah. Okay. That is something that I can't help that I'm going to have to deal with. I don't need to voluntarily add more to that. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm glad I didn't. So yeah, that's my, that, that's, that, that's my week. How about you? <laughs> uh, I, not a whole lot for me. I, uh, you know, didn't, it, it's, it, I don't think, uh, I was, I, I think I kind of feel like I'm moving the right way this week. I don't think I felt quite as depressed as I did last week, which seemed, you know, which is good. Um, you know, cause I felt the last couple weeks, I think I've been saying that I've kind of felt like leveled off with my depression and stuff. So it feels like I, you know, uh, maybe moving the right way a little bit here finally, um, which could be, you know, the medicine kind of working, um, you know, my body getting, uh, used to it a little more. Um, but it kind of stunk. I didn't have therapy this week because, you know, uh, uh, I think I mentioned last week, like she's, um, my therapist had to cancel our appointment and unfortunately she was already booked. So, you know, nothing I can do there. Um, but I did get to go out with, uh, I went out and had, uh, you know, a couple refreshments with, uh, um, Jeannie, Tony's wife last night. And that was a good time. You know, we haven't hung out in a while, so that was nice. We, you know, cool. just, yeah, just went out and, you know, just, it was nice, you know, just lay back and relaxed and, and whatnot. That was, you know, and it's, it's nice, you know, just hanging out with people that you don't hang out with all the time is always fun, you know, and, you know, we went to a place that's, you know, a laid back uh, bar. It's it's cool because, you know, it's not like a high uh, volume bar. So, you know, you don't have tons of people in there or anything like that. So, you know, it's not you don't you know, I don't feel real anxious in there or anything along those lines. And it's just nice to, um, you know, just get out and talk with people, you know, and, and just, um, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, it it's just always nice to to get out and and do those kind of things with people. I, I wish it could happen more often, you know. Um, but eh, whatever, you know. <laughs> you know, like I said, it's nice to get out with her, and Tony, and I've said nice like forty times in the last two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just realize I am at late have, heavily leaning on that. Um, but that's a big deal is to is to go out of. To establish relationships, so you already have a relationship at one level, but you're uh, you're opening yourself up to relationships at different levels, yeah, with the same people that you already have a relationship with, in you know wh- what in whatever way it is, yeah, yeah. And to, I think that's the that's that is not easy for everyone to do. No, it's not, and it's you know, and it's funny because you know her and I. It, it, it's cool because her and I like get along on a different level 
than like when we're in a group dynamic, yeah. you know? So it, yeah. it, that's, that's, what's nice about it again. Nice. But, uh, yeah. you know, uh, so well, it's re- it, it, do, would you call it rewarding? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because we get each other on a, a kind of a different, like I said, it's a different environment when her and I hang out than when we're in the group dynamic, you know? Yeah. I, um, because we've all, you know, her and I have had our ups and downs in the past and stuff, but we've always kind of got along differently than we got along with, with other people. So it's, you know, um, and it's fun. You know, she said Tony was talking about hanging out with us and she was like, no, you're not allowed. <laughs> See, there you have it. I love that. Yeah. Love that. Right. And it's fine. You know, Tony and I hung out a couple yeah. weeks ago and it's, you know, like I said, it's, it, it was fun. Um, and then it was getting, you know, funny on the way out, you know, uh, someone recognized me and called my name out and Jeannie was like, you know, she's like, did someone call your name? And I'm like, I don't know. Like nobody ever calls my name out. So I was, I was just like, Oh, and I just kept walking basically, <laughs> but it was someone that knew us. So <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. yeah, it was just kind of funny. Cause I'm like, Oh, you know, like, you know. <laughs> You walk out, and you're like, yeah, they know who I am. Yeah, <laughs> do you know who I am? No. I am. But yeah, you know, I it, it's it's odd because I go with depression. I go in these cycles, obviously, with it that I'll go from where I don't want anything to do with leaving the house, yeah, or I can't leave the house or whatever, and then I kind of crave it, you know, and I'll I'll crave interaction, but when I get it. Then I'm like, today, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to go back out. <laughs> yeah. Well, how many times have you, know, you had, like, that opportunity to be, to have a, a get-together with somebody, and you're actually looking forward to it, and two hours before, you're just like, eh, I, 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 I don't want to do this. Yeah. I mean, how many times has that happened? Quite a bit, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, many times, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really starting to notice that I do that a lot, and I didn't even know I had that in me. Yeah. Like, where all of a sudden I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to do this. I want my comfort zone. Right. And it isn't is even home. just a, hey, you know, I don't really feel like going out tonight. It's a, no. like, no, I just want to curl back into bed. I just want to be in my comfort zone. Or not even just bed, but it's, you know, yeah. in, in the house or in my room or whatever. It's, yeah. yeah. It's you don't want very to be much. on. You don't want to open yourself up. Or, yeah. and And at first, and it's, for me, it's usually with somebody that I actually do want to see. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that when the time comes, I'm just kind of like, uh, well. Yeah. And I feel even, and the thing is, like, and I feel even worse at times, too, because if it is someone like Jeannie or Tony yeah, uh, or Jen, you know, when we hang out, it's like, I don't have to be on for them. Yeah. They know everything that I go through, uh, essentially. They know who I am. They, they've known me for so long that. And there's no expectation. I don't have to be on or whatever. It's like if I'm just sitting there and I'm down, they get it. You know what I mean? Like they yeah. want to be with you know, around me because I'm just me. It isn't that they want to hang out with me because it's like, oh, it's Brian, life of the party. Yeah. Yeah, ooh, you know, it's not. And they're not going to try like to that. change you. No, not at all. And yeah. but I put that pressure on myself yep. that it's like, well, if I go out, I have to be on. And, but they don't put that pressure on me. And I know that that's the worst part is in my head. The logical part of my brain says Mm -hmm. they have no expectation of you, but the illogical part of my brain, the distorted thinking part of my brain, if you will, there you have it, uh, will go. They expect you to be on, you have to do this. You've got to, and then it'll start going, well, you don't really feel like doing this, so maybe you should stay home because you're not really, you know, and it just, you know, yeah. and there's the internal conflict, you know. Can I ask you something about your depression? Yeah. So, like, you know, you just you just said you you got you kind of almost rated your depression level, you know, like this week versus last, you know, whatever time periods. When you do that, are you kind of rating the the feelings or are you considering thought process like what what is, what are those metrics for you that make one week better than the other <laughs> it's almost it's almost on a it's kind of like a two part thing it's kind of like a um 
it's more that there's like smaller metrics and then the overall kind of feeling because I kind of have, you know, I think I've described to you that like my anxiety, I almost feel it as though you were filling up like a cup, right? Mm -hmm. Like I can almost feel when my anxiety is rising, like to where it's, you know, how people are, they'll talk about how, you know, they feel like their, their hearts in their throat or something to that effect. That's kind of, I can feel my anxiety levels. Like it feels like I'm up to my eyes with it basically. And my depression will be that way too. I almost feel like something is pushing down on me. Wow. Like physically, like I feel like I'm just almost got weight on me. And so that's one kind of metric is basically how heavy (laughs) does that feel to me today? Can I get out of bed easily? Do I feel like I'm walking slump shouldered? That kind of feeling. And the other is if, if I stop doing stuff, like if I'm just sitting, you know, in a chair, does my brain immediately go into like a self doubt kind of spiral Mm. or can I just sit there and kind of just look at something and, you know, have normal thoughts or do I basically does my brain kind of immediately trail into self doubt that that's kind of the two part of it. Hmm. So, and for, for a while there, it was pretty much any time I was alone, my brain was almost immediately going into worrying and Mm self-doubt, you know, like this week it's been less of it. So, yeah. 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 That, that reminds me of the, of times where I'm just not comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. And, and all my, my thoughts automatically go to places where like right now I wouldn't even think of it. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why I tend to want to sleep a lot when it's bad because it's the only escape, essentially. You know, it's the only way to truly shut my brain off, you know, and that's why, like, the anxiety is bad because the anxiety makes it hard to sleep. And then the anxiety gets going and then it's like, oh, why can't you even sleep? You can't even do this, you know, and then one fuels the (laughs) other. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a brutal, brutal combination. And yet the whole thing is, I'm sure, is quite fatiguing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then you don't sleep, right? You wake up the next day, you feel heavy from yeah. lack of sleep, you know, so it adds to the depression feeling. And, you know, you're feeling, if you feel depressed anyway, like I said, it kind of, man- one manifests the other and it just cycles. And that's why one day will turn into two because if you don't sleep well one day and then if you don't sleep well two days, it kind of can just become a process and mm-hmm. that that's why you know for a couple of weeks or whatever it, it can turn really bad without it you know without any problem for me so yeah i'm glad you asked that because that's that's something i've never really kind of uh explained you know how does so how did like so a week like this week where you you didn't have a therapy visit yeah you didn't have those that uh, how I kind of look at it is like, okay, I had a a growth opportunity or what, you know, whatever it is or something to look forward to or, or, or that does that, does that give you more anxiety? Are you conscious of that or are you actually kind of okay with it? Uh, I got nothing going this week. Yeah. It, it, I'll uh, not having therapy makes me anxious. Um, because it's an outlet, you know, like if nothing else, I go, okay, well, if, if I'm really depressed or if my anxiety is really high, I know if nothing else, I have that, you know? And so what I did this week was since me and Jeannie were going out Tuesday, I kind of, in my head, that became therapy. Oh yeah. So for this week, I was kind of like, you know, well, there's that. And then there's also, you know, the, the podcasts help because like, mm-hmm. I know I have this and then Friday I have salty language, you know? So I was like, well, I've got these that I can do, which if I don't have therapy, at least I have these, you know, so I can use these in place of therapy, which has worked out pretty well on some of the weeks. Um, you know, cause I can, like this podcast especially because that's kind of the theme of the whole thing. I can really kind of dump, you know, if, if I'm really down, I can really kind of get it out of me a little bit on here. (laughs) 
Um, but it doesn't always work. You know, a lot there there have been times where it doesn't. There's been times where we've been done uh talking on here and I've I mean there's been times we've been done and I've I've seriously just gone and gotten right back into bed. I mean I, there's been times for this show I've gotten up like an hour before we recorded uh, got a little something to eat. We've recorded and I've gone right back in and gotten into bed. <laughs> wow. And that's just been the way the day is. And yeah, yeah. You know, but it's, that's just the way it had to be that day. You know? So yeah. Anybody listening, if you ever have any like questions, kind of, if you don't do go through this yourself, if you ever want to ask me anything, always feel free to hit me up on Twitter or whatever and ask, as I've said on here, I'm I'm an open book about it, you know. So, yeah, so much of this is when when you describe a lot of how you feel, it gives me perspective on some of my own feelings and where where I can relate to them. Yeah, and go, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I, I I understand that, or and that's good because it remi- it reminds me that, that I'm not alone. Yeah, yeah, it th- this is normal. Uh, to use that word, yeah. it's just a human, human, you know, we have, you know, we, 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 we have things we go through. Yeah. We all have our struggles. Yeah. 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 And, and that's the thing, you know, anybody listening, it's like, you know, if you have depression and you don't feel the same way I do, don't think you're outside of the norm or whatever, or you are alone because it manifests differently for everybody. You know, like you may not, you may have depression and may have it totally different than me you may feel different than than i do you know it's uh, you know there are similarities that tend to kind of you know be across the board but um again it's similar to like the medications it's it, it they they affect everybody differently you know so you know don't necessarily just read one thing and go well i don't have any of that so i must not be you know must not be that bad or I must not need help or anything along those lines, you know, don't, don't have that attitude either. Well, I think one of the reasons I enjoy having these conversations is it does remind me that there's always like checking in and talking about my week where I did things right, where I could have done things differently is the reminder that I can always work on Mm self-improvement regardless. I don't have to, so much of, it happens a lot with recovery, but it, you know, with pretty much life in general, when life's going good, we just don't, we don't feel like we have something to work on. We're, we're, we're only inspired by freaking train crashes. Yeah. It's so easy to coast. When you're feeling good. Yeah. And yeah. there's little, little reminders happen all the time. Like, you know, that article that I sent you, I, 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 I stumbled upon that looking for something else, you know, cause of, cause of something a friend of mine had mentioned. And I was like, Oh, what's that about? And I looked it up and I got drifted over to here and I was like, <laughs> Oh, you know, and I start reading it and I go, Oh, cool. Okay. You know, this is great. And that's, I used to not be like that. I was not interested in any of this. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't have read it. I would have opened it up and said, eh, whatever, you know? Yeah. And, and now for me, it's, it's, it's important. It's part of who I am is to, even if I'm not in my routine and I, and frankly, I haven't been, I have not been in uh, a recovery routine at all. Sharon's been kicking my butt. She's been going to early morning meetings and this meetings here and, and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And uh, I haven't done anything. I've been keeping up with my service commitments to my groups and stuff, but that's about it. Uh, I haven't sat down and talked to, you know, people that I would meet with on a regular basis for a while now. now like, and, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Uh, do you think that has had anything to do with the way you've been up until about last week? It's kind of hard. It's hard to say. Okay. Because I, I always, I'm always checking in on that. I'm always thinking about that. Okay. So that's, that's, I'll start with that is I, I am always aware saying, okay, am I in a, you know, am I in this place because I'm not uh, doing, you know, what I would usually do. Right. For me, 
a lot of it has to do it's a weird kind of thing is speaking of metrics is my attitude at work tends to be a metric for me it's like how snappy am i how you know, do, do, do people look at me and think, Oh, what's wrong with Heno? You know, it's like, no, that generally doesn't happen. That's my, that's kind of my benchmark. What's my patience level? What, what's my, what's my customer service level? And I, other than, other than a few days here or there, everything, I, I feel pretty good about where I'm at. I feel like I'm bringing the best of me that I can put out there. And so I haven't really, I haven't thought about it too much. Okay. Um, what's weird. And, and also these things about like, how am I reacting to somebody coming at me? Like, like happened, mm-hmm. you know, somebody being, you know, critical saying some rotten things. How did I handle that? Well, I, I chose, you know, that's, those are my like little things going, okay. I'm doing okay. That doesn't mean that I, you know, like I just said, am I being becoming complacent? And that's my big worry. Yeah. Am I falling into a habit of complacency? Oh, I don't need this because I'm doing okay. Right. So that's where, and this last couple of weeks I had, I made some choices. Just, it's just scheduling. Yeah, it was like I, I would have gone to my men's group, but w- yeah, we did this rehearsal for that Sunday. Oh, right. You know, yeah. That that kind of stuff. And it's just scheduling thing. It's not me coming home going, I don't want to do it. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> right. it's me coming home and saying, oh, I got something else I got to do tonight and being still up for that. And, and But here, so here's the weird thing, though, is, is what also happened in the last couple of weeks that brought me out of a spiral. Oh, I started playing some music again. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that are soothing to my soul. Yeah. You know, there's like podcasting on Wednesday nights on with the crazy life. That's good for my soul. I get done and I feel I, 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 I feel some weight off of me. Yeah. Same here. That's, that's why I was saying, you know, that if I can't do therapy doing this always kind or almost always kind of, I, I get the same feeling. It's very cathartic most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, and those are like the friendships, my true friendships that I, I really cherish are the ones where I always feel better where I walk after talking to whoever it is. Exactly. Yep. And I, that's the same thing for, with me almost all the time with getting together with my men's group or whatever it is. I, I typically feel the same way is I get that same feeling. Yeah. But I do, I, I do. Uh, yeah. I appreciate the question. Cause I do have to be, I have to keep an eye on that. Right. I do. That that was the only reason I asked was just for coincidental sake, yeah. you know, because you you were feeling like you were kind of not regressing, but you kind of felt like you were slipping a little, it seemed. And then, you know, if those things were coinciding, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've never been one to, I know a lot of people are, are, uh, they throw themselves in to, you know, they throw themselves into recovery. Let's call it, call it, let's call it that way. You know, mm-hmm. uh, they throw themselves into their, whatever their program is when they get down. And to me, I, I understand why you do that because like service to others gets you out of your own head. Mm-hmm. Being of service to someone else is a great way to, and you know, to kind of just get out of your own existence for a while and do something for somebody else. And I have so many opportunities to do that all the time that I I feel like I don't need to like double up. Like, I don't feel like that fixes me. I, th- I think that's yeah. a good opportunity. It's a way for me to allow time to go by. Does that make sense? Yeah. Where, where I just, I just process has to occur. Mm-hmm. Like I can't short circuit process, <laughs> I guess is where I'm getting at. Yeah, I get you. You know, there's no amount of service. There's no amount of meetings. There's no amount of, of, of one-on-one conversations that's going to make the process faster. All it's going to do is get me out of my own head. Mm. And I really haven't been in my head. I'm not, you know, even though I've, I felt like I've been in a funk and I'm dealing with some changes, I don't feel like, like I'm dealing with them negatively Yeah. to the point where I need to do something to, to write 
write it. You know, like yeah. it's going to it. It's just a cycle. And I'm going to cycle out of it. And I have. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, I don't feel like I, I, I you know, a few weeks of being kind of unmotivated and not really, I mean, <laughs> like I'm, I, I'm back at the gym this week. Yeah. It's been great. It was awesome. You know, I didn't do it today because I was, I was, <laughs> I, here's, here's, here's a good one. I, I, I had to crawl through the tiniest of spaces in, in, in an at, basically like an attic. And I ended up sitting when I, when I, I had to get, it's always easier to get into these things than get out of them. Sure. Yeah. And so I'm coming out, it's insulation, it's dust. It's since they built the place, it's, you know, it's 15 years of stuff sitting there oh, and, and, you know, I'm filthy, I'm dirty, I'm coughing, I'm coming out. I've ripped my shirt. Like, I don't know how many times I got scratches on my arms. And the last thing I do is sit down right on a screw. <laughs> and I mean, puncture wound in the right buttock. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it was just like, and I went, and I literally sat there for a second and went, ow, <laughs> you know, and I just, I got up. And Omar was there with me and I, and he just, and I, I, I lean forward. I'm like, okay, I, and I looked down and they were huge screws. I was like, oh. okay, that wasn't good. I'm oh like, man. I'm like, I don't. And, and then when I got down, down off the ladder and everything and, 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 and Omar was like, oh yeah, you're bleeding bad. And I, I look in the mirror and I'm, I'm, I'm a disaster. I look like, you know, I just came out of a, a, you know, the mummy that just walked out of the the tomb, just covered in dust and dirt. I'm like, yeah, don't think so much the gym tonight, you know, (laughs) I think going home, taking a shower, maybe take a bath and read a book. (laughs) Just about right. Um, But that, that, uh, that feeling of, you know, I I went to the, I went to the gym earlier this week. Great. I'm not going to beat myself up tonight for not going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you let yourself go on this one. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, you know, so I, 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 I try to look at these little, these, and I go, okay, I'm, I'm in the right part of my cycle again. Once again, I, I keep coming back to what I said a couple weeks ago is like, I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. Yeah. Like none of it feels wrong. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's true. Even when you were kind of at the low part of the cycle, I I think you're probably right with this because even that low part, you needed to be there, Uh, you know, looking back at it. Like even the, like, even the, like iPad destroying part of it, you know, like even that part of it, you need it. And I think we even said it that at that point. And I think I was like, you know, sometimes you just need to have that moment and you just can't have that moment all the time. You just, time, yeah. I think it was a bottom, you know, like if, yeah. if a week later I did it again, yes. Or I contemplated doing it again. Well, all right, maybe I need to, Yeah, like, okay, maybe yeah. you need to take a step back and evaluate some things here, but yeah, maybe I do need to put the tools into action. Yeah. Um, that kind of a thing. So, right. But to do it once and just say, you know what, maybe, and you know, but you did, you took that, you took a step out of that and said, Hey, I need to evaluate right now. And you made some changes and you've been making changes based on that. And I, I think you're probably right. I, I think that's it. Is it's as part of the overall cycle, you probably needed the full cycle. I mean, you can't, you know what I mean? Like if you take a wheel, you can't just skip part of the rolling, you know, and, and, <laughs> you know, you have to roll the whole wheel in order to, to move forward. So it's, you know, and but you that's know. why I need someone like you to, to, to stop and question because mm-hmm. I will talk myself into anything. <laughs> I will convince myself that everything is okay. Right. That's fair. Cause I'll, I'll do the opposite to myself. I will convince myself that everything is the opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> And that's where, uh, you know, that's where all the work is, Ben, you know, to uh, keep reminding myself of that worksheet. Yeah, well, that's that's it, because whether it's a, a, for both of us, honestly, because everything can't constantly be OK, but it also can't constantly all be awful. Yeah. You know, and, so. Yeah. And, and so at what point and, and this is the struggle with this stuff is like, at what point am I back into, you know, paralysis of analysis? <laughs> right. You know, how much am I going to study myself and my behaviors, you know, or at what point do I just live and exist and go, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not making anybody mad. You're not waking up regretting something you said the day before. Yeah. Uh, you, you, 
yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, I could have done this. I could have done. All right, fine. Who doesn't feel that way? There's no situation though, where you couldn't seriously say that, you know, there's every situation you could have done something different. Yeah. You know, there's no such thing. I mean, you could have had a different cereal this morning for breakfast or you could have eaten toast instead of cereal or an egg or whatever, you know I mean? Come on. Yeah. So that's, it's, it's, it's always a great way of looking at this is, is, you know, like I like to say, if I keep doing the, so the, 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 the routine I had when I got sober and decided to put, you know, boot, boot to butt and change my way of thinking if that worked, then that should always work. You know, I, if if I do that, I should never have a problem. Well, that, that doesn't mean that if I don't do it exact, I'm, I'm going to suddenly just burn down. Yeah. But on the other hand, I don't want to drift too far away from it because that is a proven system that worked for me. Yeah. You know, people say, oh, that can't work for me. Okay, well, maybe it won't. It worked for me, though. Yeah. That's all I've got. That's all I've got is my experience. This worked. You know, and I had a, one of my coworkers this week, I said, Hey, how's, how's your weekend? And he said, I drank too much. And I went, okay, that's interesting. And I, I didn't say that a lot. I thought it in my head and, and we talked about, you know, what, what he did over the weekend. And, and, and I just kind of locked that in my head because he usually doesn't say that to me just out of the blue. Mm. And then it turns out that you know, he talked to one of my other coworkers and it was a little more like, this is not good kind of stuff. So uh, I think, I think he was, he kind of threw the, threw the fishing line out there a little bit to, you know, to see what I'd say, you know, but I have a hard time, you know, I, I'm not like Mr. So why'd you say that to me? You know, like, <laughs> right? Like, let's talk about you for a while. I right. just, it's not my thing. Um, But it, it was like, I look at, it's like, okay, that's, I go, there's an opportunity right there, you know, to talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. So, well, you know, we were, we were, we'll, we'll work again tomorrow and I'll, I'll, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know. I have a hard time with that stuff. I just, I really have a hard time with that. I know a lot of other people don't, they'll walk right up to somebody and just, you know, just start preaching to them. And it's just not me. Yeah. I'm, yeah. That's a tough one. Cause Yeah. I, it's just if somebody wants to talk to me about that, I wish they would just walk up to me and talk, you know, like yeah. if he wanted to talk to you about it. I wish he would just walk up to you and say, hey, can we talk about this? Can we talk? Yeah. yeah rather than <laughs> dro- doing the little fishing expedition right? and seeing where it goes, you know, because yeah. I'm just like, OK, you know, I guess the I guess the thing I should have said is, so why did you say that? You know, what, right, what, yeah. what about this weekend did you w- compelled you to tell me that you drank too much? Yeah. Like, what, know, do, what do you mean I, by that? Like got charges pressed against you? Or... Yeah. What, what level of. So, yeah, well, and this is the worst part. Then I find out through gossip that somebody took a video and it's like, ooh, ooh yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> not good. I don't know why I just brought that up, but <laughs> yeah, well. It already went out of my head. <laughs> so. right. yeah. uh, oh lordy! Uh. Yeah, that's a uh, that's always a tough a tough situation though. I because I've never been I've never been great at picking up those cues from people. Um, or because <laughs> because well, I'm always like, do I say something? Because a lot of times I'll be I'll notice because they act, like you said you you picked it up that it was not a normal thing. Exactly. So I but... pick that stuff up, but I'm like. Uh, maybe it's just me, you know? Yeah, it's, it's like, it's like literally when you're in high school and a girl was really into you and you had no freaking clue. Oh yeah. I'm (laughs) I'm like, I have a lifetime of that. Oh, me too. I, I am oblivious to that kind of thing. I've, I have said Uh, that to people in the past because I've had people tell me, oh, so-and-so liked you. And I'm like, then tell her to tell me because I will never (laughs) pick up a clue. Like I have no idea. Uh, Uh, so funny. I am terrible at that. So yeah, that's. <laughs> and and now I'm just sitting here going, "Damn you, Brian!" Now I'm now I'm like now I'm well now I'm like taking inventory of myself right now. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't but mean to second no, guess but yourself. No, it's the right thing to do. You yeah. know, it, no, I need to do this. Yeah. It's part of the deal. Is I need to sit down and say, okay, because it 
it wouldn't affect me unless it were true. Right. But, but there was truth in it. You know what I mean? Like right. inside of me, I've already been pondering this and you've just verbalized yeah. it. And I just went, damn it. But it is obviously not my intent to make you second guess. No, yourself. it wasn't. Yeah. Not at all. It's, right. it's great. It's, it's, <laughs> it's perfect. It's one of those things where I just go, yeah. It is, <sighs> that is our job as our is being friends though is well, to, that's what it's all to about. hold yep. each other accountable you yeah. know <laughs> it's true yeah i, I stand accounted yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, stand up and be counted <laughs> for what you are about to receive oh see, critique <laughs> that, that, see if anyone you know uh you know <laughs> questioned our level of commitment here you just saw us actually you know yeah. We're, we're you know taking each other to task at times on the show itself who knew acdc <laughs> was about therapy <laughs> <laughs> i don't think and they, recovery i was gonna i'm pretty sure they weren't <laughs> we are the dealer oh no they're dealing out rock aren't they yeah okay. probably <laughs> i mean it depends i mean it depends on what you now. consider therapy to, they're, they're, they're it's peace and love that they're dealing mm, love no. is, yeah, loosely they were talking about love you know <laughs> yeah very for loosely. those about to cathart <laughs> yeah we salute you <laughs> <laughs> for those about to verbal diarrhea all over your therapist <laughs> yeah we <laughs> that's i just don't think those would have caught on they're not quite as catchy no, i'm sure those little... are the first drafts though <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think about this i don't know this is it's just not catching me, man. Like, ah, what else can we do? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Rock? Rock? <laughs> I don't know. I don't like it. <laughs> the guy who wrote the lyrics is just like, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. I don't like that one. No. It's too simple. Everyone uh, else yeah. is like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> he just gets outvoted. Fine. <laughs> Fine, we'll go with rock. Becomes a huge hit. Yeah. <laughs> I still liked it the other way better. <laughs> He's doing like op- or like open mic type shows and playing it with the original. <laughs> he's, he's, he's doing it the other way. Well, this is how it was originally written. I'm yeah. going to do it like spoken word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, get off the stage. <laughs> uh, oh, people yeah. don't even recognize him from the band. You know, they're just like, who are you? Get out of here. <laughs> For those about to share from the heart, oh. we salute you. Oh, geez, that's the name of his slam poetry night. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> oh, no. Uh. Okay, I got one for you. What do you think would happen if you went to a slam poetry night and just unloaded about your mental state? <sighs> I think it'd feel like, great. Do but... you think it'd feel good? Uh, but could you do it? I don't think I could because I think I'd be way too nervous. Like if you walked up there and you were just in that, if you were in the full, if you were in the zone, you were just the, you were the, the center of stone, the, you're just <laughs> the rock, the root you just had. And you just, just literally unloaded the truth mm-hmm. of this is how I felt this week. Yeah. You know, and, and, and when you got done, if the audience was just like jaws hanging down, just like, <laughs> would you, would you feel, you know, good or, yeah. Well, if I knew they were going to behave that way, yes, I could do it. But, uh, you know, not having any clue how they were going to react, I'd be terrified going up there. I'd probably be stumbling all over myself um, going into it. Because even, like, Tony and I have talked about, like, we had talked about the idea of at some point trying to do some sort of, like, a live podcast. And just the idea of that terrifies me. <laughs> <sighs> But man, it, it, that would be—I'm sure that would be like incredibly cathartic, though. I bet you know. I would imagine that you'd have more like tears and understanding and recognition, you know, to go up and open yourself up. But well, that's what hey—that's what singers do. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, the environment feels like it would be, you know, for that. Yeah. You know, because that's kind of the point of you know, that kind of environment is to open yourself up and be vulnerable and whatnot. But, you know, I don't know. Full of strangers. But if I went up there and dropped my mixtape, I mean, that place would just be burning to the ground. So I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what would happen, you know. Uh, Here, here, I'm just going to give you a page of my journal from yesterday. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
get up there and it's like a scene from eight mile <laughs> <laughs> not a good one i mean like yeah. the you know the spaghetti sweater thing <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> oh, yeah not good not good <laughs> yeah <laughs> And on that note, and on that note, <sighs> keep breathing. No. Yeah. <laughs> if, you know, if you'd like to continue the conversation with us, <laughs> uh, yeah, if we're actually at that point, so yeah, I think this is a good spot to uh, wrap her up. So, uh, yeah, if you'd like to continue the conversation with us, you can uh, check out our website, the crazy life podcast dot weebly dot com. Uh, you can email us if you'd like to at the crazy life podcast at outlook dot com. Uh, you can reach Jen on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. Uh, you, uh, 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 Heno, how can we reach you? <laughs> Find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. He sure is. <laughs> I don't know that. And you can find me on Facebook, too. Yeah, that's true. You can. Or here. Find us here once a week. Yeah. iTunes Stitcher. <laughs> yeah, that's also true. Uh, you can also check the show out on Twitter at the crazy life pod where I post when the new episodes go up, but you should already know cause you should be subscribed because mm-hmm. shame on you. If you're not, um, you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. You can find the other podcast I'm on, which is salty language at salty underscore language or at salty com, which you should go check out unless you want to be offended. I mean, it's not safe for work. Um, Let's see. What else? Uh, you can check out my blog, which I really need to get a blog post up this <laughs> week. I really need to get one up this week. It's been too long. At tsunami.wordpress.com. And you can check our Facebook group out at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Uh, and we are also part of the Tangent Bound Network, which you can find at tangentboundnetwork.com. And the Wicked Radio Network, which you can find at wickedradionetwork.com. We're also part of the pod. Uh, I screwed that one up. The Pattern Family group, which you can uh, check, like hashtag Pattern Family, uh, and just there's a whole bunch of shows just helping each other, uh, just get some attention drawn to them. Since we don't have you know big podcast engine monies behind us, so you know go check out a bunch of different shows on that too. And as Heno said, you know you can find us on iTunes and Stitcher and all that kind of stuff. And if you do check us out on those, please review us, rate us, um, share us with your friends, whatnot. Try to help us get more uh, listeners and move up in the uh, algorithms that they use. Let's see. And then, of course, the fun stuff. We're not therapists or doctors or trained professionals. We're just, well, this week, two people sharing our uh, experiences and whatnot. Um, if you need therapy or professional help, please go seek it out. Uh, please don't self-diagnose or, you know, please don't try to treat it yourself. I did for way too long and all it did was lead to my depression getting way too big of a grip on me. And now it's a much harder fight than it should be. Um, so, you know, learn from Brian kids. Um, and also if you're feeling suicidal, please do not act on it. Uh, please get a hold of like the suicide prevention hotline number or text to, uh, to seven, four, one, seven, four, one, and tell them that you're feeling, uh, suicidal and they will, uh, try to help you through your crisis or contact somebody in your support system or call nine one one, tell them you're having a mental health emergency. Or if you have an, uh, um, insurance, a lot of them have a number you can call and tell them you're having a mental health emergency. Um, or if you go to our Facebook page, there are different, uh, resources available on, uh, a file there that says, uh, getting help, I believe it is, or something like that. So, but please don't act on it. Again, if you're making plans also, let someone know if you've gotten to that point, please let someone know. Don't get to, you know, where, where you're in the, going to act on it. And, uh, I think that's everything. Did I forget anything, Heno? Are you still there, Hannah? I, I muted myself. Oh, okay. I was like, did I lose, Hanno? <laughs> I was in there talking. <laughs> no, that sounds like a quite comprehensive list. All right. Whew. All right. Like All right, everybody. Remember, keep breathing.